Welcome to the Two Guido Guitar Guys. Uh, today is going to be a uh, lesson in, in creating a Confederate flag. Uh, what we're going to do here today is we're going to be making a Confederate flag for the top of the General Lee on some magnetic material. Uh, so what I found is that the uh, magnetic material that I use anyways is, is by a company called Magnetics Materials. Um, let's see the box here for uh, basically, it's a. Um, it doesn't even have a label on it. But it's a 20, 24 inch by 10, 24 inch by 10 foot roll uh, that we've cut. And then what I've cut it as is two 20 inch pieces. So we have basically a 40 inch flag by 54. So 40 by 54 flag. And then what I'm just doing right now is I'm using the paints that I'm using for this are actually um, can be found at your local Joann's fabrics. What it is, is is a Krylon Shortcuts. And I found this works really well um, when you go to fold the flag over or you go to roll it up. Uh, it holds really well. Um, the other paint that can be used on, the, um, on these flags here are uh, let's grab one over here have it is the tester spray enamel and this can be found in any place where they sell models and things like that I don't know if that's coming in there it looks really blurry on my screen I'll move it out a little bit see if it comes a better tester no. uh, but testers modeling paint works really well as well it also has the flexing agent in it uh, to allow the flag to flex. What I've done is I've just taped it down in the corners because what we'll do is we'll paint these corners by hand. The ones that are uh, being covered right now are going to be painted by hand. And basically what you want to do, and, and I filled in the first panel completely, I painted the first panel completely just to show you that you can either do the whole panel or, or you can do, if you can see on this side, uh, what you can see, what I did here, I don't know if it's showing up in the camera. Yeah, it is. You can see where I just painted the sections where the white lines are going to be. Now, this is a bright white that I'm using on this color. Uh, the colors that I'm actually using are um, the bright white. Uh, the red on here will be either, I believe I'm going with the testers red on this one. And that is called... Anyways, the blue, the blue I am using is not lost right blue. It is no, nothing. It's nothing. Anyways, you have a red pepper, which you could use. I am not using the red pepper. This is color number Case SC S033. I'm not going to be using that color red. I'm going to be using a different color red on mine. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. I'm working out of my cellar today. So the blue that I'm going to be using on this project is going to be KCS073, and that's the Forever Blue. It really looks nice on the flag, and it's an excellent color to use. Uh, the red that I'm going to be using is a Tester's Red. Um, I can't seem to find the cap to tell me the color of it because uh, my garage here is a little bit um, messed up as far as everywhere and I don't know where the cat went. Should be right here of course but here it is. Found it and this is going to be 
Brilliant Red. Gloss Brilliant Red, and this is color number 20, or 1203, and this again is going to be a tester's paint. 1203 for the red sections of the flag. Now I've just painted this portion. We're going to let this portion dry. Uh, once this portion of the flag dries, we're going to come back and we're going to go ahead and do our red first, since that's the largest portion. And then we'll come back with the the blue to, to uh, finish it off. Uh, or I may do the blue first. Um, we'll see. But it's got to dry for about three hours. And then when I'm all done, I'll go ahead and uh, show you the final flag. So this is part one. I'll come back and do part two, part three as we go through. So this is the first part. When I come back, I'll be masking off the uh, red portions of the flag. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, measurements again. The traditional generally flag is 39 and 3 sixteenths uh, by 54 uh, by 54 inches or 30, 30 uh, I think some people say 53 and 3 quarters or something like that. I found that if you go just an even 40, 40, 54, you're, you're just fine. You'll still have room for the General Lee logos on the side of the, the thing and I think the flag will be a little bit more proportionate. Um, using even numbers than uh, using 3 16th of uh, you know, 39 and 3 16th. Just, just go to 40. Uh, two 24 inch pieces cut down to 20 inches each. So you have two piece flag. Uh, everything else will be a single piece, but uh, when it's on the car, then we're going to see the seam. Nobody's going to look at the top of the roof and see that seam. Plus, when it's magnetically down, it should be almost perfectly smooth. All right, I'll be back with part two when we come to paint the rest of the rest of the roof. All right, welcome back to the two Guido guitar guys. Uh, our paint is now dry on the white portion of the paint, as you can see. We made it just so that the lines would be outlined as far as the General Lee's flag is concerned. Now, what we've done is we've gone we've gotten some 3M tape. This tape's approximately one inch in, in length, about 0 0.93, 0 0.96. And what I've done is I put it around where you can see there's a slight edge just around the outside of it, making a nice straight line all the way around the outside um, of our flag. Again, you have your center section. Now, this center section is, is not glued together or anything, but I tried to push it together as close as I possibly could to make it as best as I can. Uh, but again, you're going to have a seam in the middle, but nobody's going to be able to see that when it's up on top of the car, uh, unless somebody jumps up there and tries to specifically look for it. I don't think they're going to be able to see it. But anyways, uh, we've got a basically one inch border around there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to start again. Uh, when I start again, what I'll have down is the stripes uh, for the flag. will be down there and I'm going to let you know how to do those. I'm um, probably going to do two inches from one corner, three inches from the other. So we have a three or four inch um, gap on both sides there. But once it's done, I'll uh, bring the video back up we'll take a look at it. Alright. Alright, first stripe is down. Back on uh, Two Guido Guitar Guys. First stripe is down. As you can see, what we did was we put in two parallel stripes. You try to get them as straight as you possibly can. You're never going to be perfect with them. Uh, but you try to get them down though, as, perfect, as smooth as you can. And what I did with these is just to make it consistent. And what we want to look for here is a three inch um, three inches between the ends and the ends. If you look there, two to five, three inches. Go up here, two to five, three inches. A little bit off there, a little bit, but not too bad. Then if we come around to this side and measure it over here, two to five, three inches. Come down here again, two to five, three inches. So we've got a three inch band going up the middle of the middle of the unit. When I come back, I'll have the cross one on as well. We're going right about an inch, uh, inch or so. If you look down here, starting just about an inch uh, from the from the outside um, where the tape starts, it's exactly one inch. And if you look over here, same thing. It's exactly one inch from where the tape actually starts. If you put the tape right on the edge there it would be one inch on that side as well. So that's the first stripe. 
for our good old Gibson Hazard flag. And this is going to be a hand painted flag so that I can tell everybody it's a hand painted flag and you'll see a portion of that as I'm uh, doing that as well. Now I'm going to get the other side on. We'll see if we can do just as good a job on that side as we did on this side. See you in a minute. Alright, here we are again. Now both of the lines are in. Basically three inches straight up the side. And if you look this way, we've got three inches straight up the side as well. Little crooked, not a hundred percent straight, but no one will notice when we're done. This is pretty straight there and it turns and goes over there. It gets a little uh, cat wonky, but uh, it's all right. I don't think anyone will notice on uh, this only because we've got kind of a lumpy piece of paper anyways here uh, that we're using. I'm going to try to straighten it out once more, see if I can get it absolutely perfect, but I think that's about as good as we're going to get. Next time you see it, we're going to have the center cut out. Uh, what you're going to do is you can take an X-Acto knife, cut out that center so that you have the center opening, and we should be good to go to start the paint. All right, the X is cut out. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take something small. And uh, I'm using a washer right at this point. Uh, if I can find it, probably can't because nothing's where I left it. What I'm taking is a little washer that I use to go around the edge. When you see it, anyways, it's a little washer. What I'm using is using it to go around the edge on, this, on the tape. What you want to do is you just want to make sure that tape is firmly in place on all the sections that it intersects. Even in these areas here, um, where the, the tape is overlapping on each other, you want to make sure that those are pushed down very tightly. And that will prevent some of your bleed through. Because you don't want it bleeding through. You don't want your paint bleeding through. Even though we're going to hand paint, you're still going to get some bleed through that we'll have to touch up later. But if you do it correctly, you won't have to worry about a lot of it bleeding through. Only a little tiny bit will bleed through. Um, and then we can touch that up later, or we can have got some alternate ideas as well. So I'm going to go through and touch those up. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting the blue. And uh, show you about when I'm halfway through with the blue. Alright, now you can see the blue half done as I promised. Um, everybody's looking at this probably going, wow, that looks like shit. Um, it does. Uh, but again, that is the first coat. It is being hand painted. Uh, but wait till you see when it's all done. When it's all said and done, you're going to see this thing and it's going to look fantastic. I already did some tests where I've already done the hand painting and stuff like that. Looks fantastic. So uh, stay tuned. Coat number two coming up. Okay, we've blocked off all the blue, and the blue is all dried and good now, and now we're ready to do the red. The red paint's going to take a little longer, so we're going to use a bigger brush. We're still going to hand paint it, um, so that it's a hand painted flag. As I mentioned before, we're going with all hand painted flag on this one. Talk to you later. Hand painted flag. As you can see, you can see it looks hand painted. And that is coat number one. Coat number two and number three I won't show you, but I'll show you the finished product when it's all done. Well, welcome back. You can see a couple of coats of paint been put on there. You can actually see the striations from the paint marks. Hand painted, you can see them in the red. Well, if you get a good look in the red, you can see them in the red, you can see them in the blue can't see them too good in the white because I sprayed the white so the white looks perfectly smooth but you will you won't see any of this when I'm done there are some areas like this corner here where I had it taped down where the white is completely missing can't tell if you can see that um, and a couple other places there is some bleed through a little bit of bleed through which I'll go back again with the white paint and I'll sharpen up those edges any of the major bleed through I'll, I'll do the rest of it I'll kind of leave because it is supposed to be a painted flag uh, to begin with that goes on the General Lee and there we go we have a stars and bars um, right now you don't have any stars on it but we have some stars to put on there later you can see this is about three inches wide all the way up 
three inches wide all the way down and we've got this thing ready to go. It's going to dry a little bit longer um, then I'm going to touch it up with the white paint, give it another few hours to dry then we'll come back and we'll fix our stars. In this situation what I decided to do make myself life a lot 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 easier is we've got some uh, 3x5 or uh, some uh, package of these porcupine stickers. I got these from porcupine stickers. I don't know if you can read that. Uh, porcupine stickers off of eBay. I'm going to set this down. up again. Can't tell if you can see them or not, but there you go. We're going to make sure we get those stars put in there in the appropriate spots. A couple little flaws in the, uh, in the paint, a couple little flaws in the flag itself. Ah, let me turn it back because it's the right way. But we got these three inch stars. Perfect for this application that are going to go on here. Um, I don't know the distance just yet, so I'm going to measure the distances and figure out exactly how the stars go because it is one, two, three, center star, one, two, three. So you have seven stars evenly placed along the back end of the of the uh, thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and measure it out and figure out exactly what the distance that needs to be for my stars and bars. Alright, next time you see this thing, it'll have the touch-up all done, and I'll have it fixed. At least the first star right in the center that's got to be cut, because the first one has got to be cut right down the middle, because again, this is a two-piece flag. Alright, welcome back, and now we're going to be working on the stars for the stars and bars. Um, I didn't get to show you this last time, but I'm going to show it to you now. As far as the actual stars are concerned, as you can see, there's three stars per page here. I'm going to try to stay it out of the way. And basically, these stars come already uh, printed on the thing. This is from those porcupine, uh, uh, the porcupine uh, stickers. What we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, split coats, the white, the gloss white. What we're going to do is just going to spray that right over top, so that you're just giving a coat of the paint to the to the stickers, so that they're the right color and they match the white that we used on the flag. And then what you're going to do is once those are dry, you're going to cut them up so that you have individual uh, cut them up once once they're dry. It takes about three hours for them to dry. Uh, these are just going to actually be extras just in case I screw up on the original ones. Total of 13 stars is what you need. I ordered 30 just in case uh, I messed up and didn't get the stars put in place. It gives me a lot of extras so that uh, I can uh, make some corrections if I have to uh, just in case I mess up. Well, let's go over to the flag and you're going to see that I've already cut them out piece by piece. And what I want to do is I want to measure these flags or measure these stars. You can see I already have a couple here extra that I've already painted. These The stars have already been painted um, and they've just been laid out uh, just haphazardly right now. But I'm going to go through. What I want to do is I want to measure these stars and uh, take a measurement on the stars and see exactly what they they measure from side to side here. And as you can see on that one, measures from arm to arm, three inches uh, from the top. Now let's try each arm and see if it's five inches all the way around, three inches that way, three inches that way. So these stars are symmetrical looks like they are three inches in every direction. So the stars don't matter which way you put them. So in other words, even though it's cut this way, if it's this way, it's the same. If it's this way, it's the same. It doesn't matter as far as the stars are concerned. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to place the stars into position so that I'm going to have an even keel as far as the stars are concerned. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that when the stars are put in place, that they're going to be even going through um, the flag. 
And what we're going to do, how we're going to do that, is we're going to put like almost a marker on there so that each one of the stars faces two of the legs towards the rear bar. And they're going to be as close to the rear bar as we can, the point at the bottom. Same thing here. Flip this one around. Top point at the bar. And what you're going to see is you're going to see a line. Um, and I'm going to use my ruler for this. You're going to see a line, a straight line, where the edges of the stars are all going to line up to that line, which is going to be even to our um, even to our flag. So that's the way we're going to set up all the stars. And again, this one's going to go here, same way, right off the tip. Um, and that one is actually going to be almost perfectly centered, but right off that tip, so that we're right in the middle of, of everything on that one. We're, but it's going to be closer to the one side, because that's where it needs to be in order for the stars to be lined up correctly. So that we have our stars going down the one side. Again, you're going to have a line, a space here that's going to be even throughout the entire thing uh, to make sure that our stars are correct. So in this situation, we got to make sure our points are like this, facing down. Two legs are up, facing down. Two legs are up, facing down. So all our stars are exactly the same position. And we're going to try to make them as even as, as possible as we can. Same thing here. You may want to bring this down a little bit. Put it almost right in the center, but you know, it needs to be closer to the top edge there. Uh, I'll make sure that's centered on that center one so you can see this line is lined up. This line is getting lined up. This line is lined up. And we're going to go do the other side as well. Making sure that we're lining up. Again, the, the bottom bars, these two are going to be like this. Which means i got to turn this one. Like that. Turned like that. These over here, same thing. We want our points that way. So these two come this way. Same thing here. So as you can see, that's going to be the pointing in the direction of our star. So the next time I see you, I'll have at least the first star placed, and then we'll start measuring out for the rest of the stars. I believe it's going to be my measurements that I originally did. I think I'm going to stick with. It's nine and a half inches. Um, it was 62 inches, 62.2 from here to there is uh, from point to point 62 inches divide that out by seven stars comes out to be about nine uh, nine point six uh, 67.2 nine point six nine and a half inches basically so we're going to start from the center of each star go about nine and a half inches out for each one of the stars and that should be perfect for our handling so the next time you see it it'll have at least one star affixed all right, as you can see, I've put down a few of the stars. Um, they're not 100% perfectly straight. Just need to do a little cleaning on them, too. Uh, but as you can see, they look pretty damn good. That looks pretty damn good. And they are exactly from point to point. Because uh, that's going to be the center of the stars. So nine and a half inches apart from each other. Uh, going nine and a half inches apart from each other. And you'll have an even kilter 
and this one's a little bit further off but it's close enough nine and a half inches off of each one of those and it looks almost absolutely perfect i'm going to keep going with the nine and a half inch mark going from point to point and uh, we'll finish up the rest of the bars on here and the next time you see it it's going to be completely done all right here we are back again and the stars and bars are complete as you can see all the stars are in place all the bars are in place Let's see if I can get this thing in a one clean shot I gotta back way up I don't have that much room here I'm running out of room but you can see pretty much the whole flag in this shot here uh, overview of the flag from here can't really see the seam in the video anyways but there is a seam straight down the center I'm gonna cut that with the an exacto knife with a razor blade to make sure it's it's good and then we're going to clear coat this sucker and you can see that the stars are on there everything seems to match got them about as straight as I can possibly get them they're probably not a hundred percent straight but again this is a hand painted flag you want perfect go out and buy a flag that's already done but this one is hand painted it's going on my General Lee it's the colors I wanted for my flag uh, but I think it looks fantastic and uh, I got the steps on here today and he thinks it looks fantastic too and even if he doesn't he's going to keep his mouth shut and say it looks fantastic all right so next uh, time you see us we're going to have it clear coated and we'll do one last walk around with it clear coated so that you can see that the striations in the in the blue which you can see from the paint marks all that stuff so i can get it in the light you can see those striations and stuff like that are all going to disappear when uh when i go and do the clear coat all right she's all done clear coats on there as you can see the striations that used to be i'll get in the light here striations that used to show up on the blue are now pretty much gone she's still a hand painted flag she's not real shiny all over the place i didn't want it to come out so like it was a piece of glass or anything like that but she looked pretty damn good she now needs to dry overnight and then what i'll do is i'll come back and i'll cut through that star in the top there I wanted to clear coat it before I cut it so it would be a nice clean cut um, she is done that is making a confederate flag remember nine nine and a half inches off center for each one of the little flag pieces and she looks pretty good I'm gonna get out of here now because there's a lot of fumes in this basement now and uh, she's done I'm gonna upload this video to YouTube any comments or questions please feel free to ask I'll be glad to answer any questions I can for you on this project again the two Guido guitar guys thank you for watching subscribe uh, hit the notification button uh, so that you can get our most recent content the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the 01 for the general doors see you next time